Now, granted, there are certain teams that it seems like over recent years I've loved to crap on. The Cleveland Browns obviously being one. Hashtag skid marks. The Jacksonville Jaguars being another. My Chicago Bears being another. And of course, it's all deserved and it's all merited. But another one of my favorite punching bags in recent years has been the New York Jets. And frankly, when you look at the Jets and the organization and their history over the past 40-plus years, uh, since the days of Namath and his guarantee at Super Bowl III, it's the one thing the Jets still have to hold on to. You just look at this organization, and it's just a... Uh, for the most part, it has the occasional blips of success, but for the most part, they're a joke. One of the worst-run, poorly-run franchises in the National Football League. They just are. Now, in 2015, there's a little bit of fool's gold there. Last place schedule, their new general manager, Mike McKagan, had brought in a new head coach. They spent some money in free agency, made some moves, and they got some experience there, and they decided they wanted to make a run at a wild card berth. And, oh, my God, the Jets went 10-6. and six. Oh, and this means big things going forward. What a great, impressive start to year number one, and all that shit is ridiculous. Not surprising to me whatsoever. The New York Jets wasted 2015 by trying to go 10 and 6, still ultimately, of course, being the Jets finding a way to miss the playoffs after winning 10 games. Now, going into the 2016 season, they were another year older. All types of distractions especially with the quarterback situation, which is, are we going to sign Fitzpatrick, are we not? And we ultimately do end up bringing him in. And, of course, he didn't perform to the level of 2015, which wasn't that great to begin with. And you end up with one big quarterback carousel of crap for 2016. The Jets finishing 5-11 and was no grand surprise to me, and it probably wasn't, honestly, for a lot of you, including some Jets fans, unless they got caught up in what happened last year. Last year was a fluke. This past season was a more accurate representation of who the Jets were as an organization. Too old, too distracted, too slow, too many holes on both sides of the ball. And you wonder how this organization ultimately gets to this point in time. They're not the worst organization in the league, no. Top five, though, consistently, absolutely. You go back to 2009, you hire Rex Ryan, oopsie daisies. Eh, but that's kind of hindsight is 2020. They trade up a bunch in that 09 draft to go get Mark Sanchez with the fifth overall pick. So they give up several picks, all the while Mark Sanchez craps out. Why did he crap out? Well, the best way to help your young quarterback that you've just given up a bunch of picks to move up to get, trying to say that he's going to be your franchise guy, is of course to never really help him on the offensive side of the ball. It's just to continuously be stuck in this cycle of trying to build your defense, build your defense, build your defense. So it's no surprise Sanchez maybe didn't have it, that's true, but the organization never did him any favors. Tanabam is Idzik, it doesn't matter. They both sucked. And they did a horrible job of building a roster around the young quarterback. And frankly, just a horrible job of building the roster and drafting in general. Let's take a look back at their draft history since 2010. They've had a total of eight first-round picks. Eight. And every single God-blessed one of them has been spent on a defensive player. Now, I understand in some situations, maybe it's a thing of, you're staying true to your board and you're taking the best available player. But maybe at some point in time, you have to realize that you do occasionally have to look at your roster and say, you know, well, we might love this defensive player. If he can't play offense, it doesn't fucking matter, and it does us no good. There has to be some type of balance to the force. There has to be some type of balance on the team. And when you consistently invest all of your premium picks in the first round over a 6-7 draft span on the defensive side of the ball, you have to wonder, A, if that means that you consistently miss on the defensive side of the ball, which their track record with these first-round picks is kind of a 50-50 bag anyways, and two, what the hell does that mean for the offensive side of the ball? Those first-round picks since 2010, Kyle Wilson, bust. Muhammad Wilkerson, stud. Quentin Copel's bust. D. Milner, bust. Shelton Richardson, tool, but he can play. Calvin Pryor, eh. Leonard Williams, stud. 
Darren Lee, jury's still out. But you look at that, that's eight players. Eight players that they've drafted on the defensive side of the ball. Eight of them. And three of them currently are on the roster. And two of them is just because they busted out and crapped out. Frankly, three of them, Wilson, Copels, and Milner, they all stunk. Stunk. You spend two of your first three picks in the draft every year since 2010 on defensive players. It's very reminiscent of the Bears. You still had holes and major flaws in the defensive side of the ball. With that type of investment on the defensive side of the ball, you should have not only an elite defense, the by far number one defense in the league, you should have an all-time epic defense, steel curtain, fearsome, foursome type of defense. Doomsday defense, 85 Bears defense, 2000 Ravens defense, 2002 Bucks defense. You spend this much on the defensive side of the ball in terms of draft pick currency and draft pick investment, you had best damn better have an all-time great defense. But, of course, the Jets are the Jets, and they're fucking stupid, and they don't. And then even when you look at beyond just the first round and spending a first-round pick, every one they've had since 2010 on the defensive side of the ball, look at their second-round picks. Some of them have been on the offensive side of the ball. And look at how bad they've been. Stephen Hill, Geno Smith, Jay Samaro. Think about that. Stephen Hill busted out of the league. Geno Smith never really took hold of the quarterback job. Jay Samaro busted out on the team. Devin Smith, no impact or contribution whatsoever, quite disappointing. And Christian Hackenberg, which the team felt so confident about, when they had a meaningless game the last week of the season, they still decided they didn't want to give this kid a chance. Those have been their last five second-round picks. Stephen Hill, Geno Smith, Jay Samaro, Devin Smith, Christian Hackenberg. Frankly, it's a miracle this damn team is 5-11. and 11. And then look at him defensively still. 20th against the pass, only 14th against the run, 16th in total yardage allowed, and 28th in total points allowed per game. When you look at this performance, while I'm not usually an advocate of, hey, you know, let's fire everybody after two years, because that's typically not a way to run the organization, you know, McCagnan put this organization in part in this situation by investing all this money in free agency and trading for people. And then of course, drafting solely in the first round on the defensive side of the ball and spending two of the first three picks, the last two drafts on the defensive side of the ball. They still can't get right. They still can't figure it out. And then to make matters fucking worse because of some of the shit that's happened over the years and McCagnin included, they're about 7 million over the salary cap, the way it currently sits now. So all these draft picks, very few of whom have actually worked out in terms of the premium picks since 2010, several second-round picks that have busted out, all these first-round picks on the defensive side of the ball, and your defense is mediocre to suck factor, and you're $7 million over the fucking salary cap. How the hell is this team going to get better anytime soon is a question that demands to be answered. And no, it's not overreaction. It's just a simple, honest look at the facts. This team is terrible, and they've done it to themselves. And the current administration is continuing that same cycle of crap. And to me, it blows my ever-loving mind that when you've got Shelton, Sheldon Richardson talking about where the hoe's at in the locker room before a game, and there's no discipline, he's not suspended, he's not inactivated, you got all this other crap. Brandon Marshall seems to be more concerned with his football career afterwards in terms of going into broadcasting than actually playing on the field. You got all this other dumb crap, and Todd Bowles lets it happen, loses his locker room. How the hell does he still have his job? It just blows my mind. So now you have a situation where you have an old team that's only going to get older. You've got a bunch of knuckleheads in the freaking locker room that are more focused on other shit other than winning football games, a head coach who can't control the roster, and frankly, a general manager that looks like a repeat of Tannenbaum and Idzik and is not very good when it comes to the NFL draft. That's what you got. And a team that's over the salary cap. Good luck improving this shit fest in the offseason. Well, you could say in theory that they could do something in the NFL draft. But, of course, this is the Jets, and it doesn't matter if they have six picks and they're picking six overall in the first round. It doesn't matter if they have their second and third round pick. Um, it just doesn't matter, does it? And it especially won't matter 
if this dumbass organization spends any picks at all on the defensive side of the ball, look, I know they have defensive needs. They still need an edge rusher after all of these years. You would have thought, all these years they've been running the 3-4. At some point in time, you might have wanted to get yourself a 3-4 edge rusher. And I don't know what the hell they thought they were getting in Copel's, thinking he might actually be a 3-4 edge rusher. Jesus Christ. All these years, you still don't have that edge-bending, edge-breaking, edge penetrating 3-4 outside linebacker that causes offensive linemen nightmares. All these picks on the defensive side of the ball, and you've got nothing there. You still need athleticism and speed at inside linebacker. Your defensive line is solid. Very solid. But your safety play is mediocre and your corner play was absolute crap. You're paying Darrell Revis all this big time money to suck. Revis Island, it's more like Revis stuck in fucking quicksand. Jesus Christ. But even with these needs still on the defensive side of the ball, this team has to invest heavily in this draft on the offensive side. They must. They have no choice. If they are foolishly going to pin their hopes on Christian Hackenberg developing into a starting NFL quarterback, then be that as it may, you best damn sure get him some help. You need an actual NFL starting tight end, which they clearly don't freaking have. They need better talent on the offensive line in all areas. Tackle, guard, probably going to have to release Nick Mangold due to salary cap concerns, so you're going to need to center. You need a young, long-term running back. You know, when I look at this Jets team at this point in time with that sixth pick, the best available offensive player is the way they have to go. In the second round, the best available offensive player. In the third round, the best available offensive player. It is that simple. There's none of this shit about, well, this defensive player was too good to pass up on, or this guy was this, or we have a corner need, or we have a needed safety, or we have a needed edge rusher. No, fuck that shit. You've been drafting defense for over a half fucking decade, and the shit hasn't worked out. Why continue to perpetuate that same cycle and expect the results to be any different? It's the same type of crap I knock the Browns for. It's time to break up the monotony, shift philosophies, and do something different. Offense, offense, offense. You must. Because if you don't, you sit there like dumb dicks and spend two of your first three picks on the defensive side of the ball, there's a very good chance the Jets will be picking number one overall in the 2018 draft. And if that's the philosophy, then so be it. But the general manager and the head coach will both be gone at that point. Why would you set up the next administration to do that? And then furthermore, it won't matter because Woody Johnson's a moron. He'll hire other morons who will sit there and make a moronic choice at the quarterback position with the number one overall pick in 2018's draft. They must go offense, offense, offense. I cannot emphasize this a month. I will emphasize it one more time. Offense, offense, offense. Enough of this defense cr first crap. Because it's yet again helped you miss the playoffs in 2016. And it's probably going to help you miss the playoffs again this upcoming season. 